Hi, I'm Mark Miklich, Technical Product Manager for Small Character Technologies here at Squid Ink. Uh, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the bleed or the back flush circuit for our Jetstream CIJ printer's print head. Okay, first of all, some of you might be wondering uh, what exactly is the bleed or the back flush uh, for our printer. Uh, when is it used? Um, so one uh, item you've already seen if you've watched our other videos is the back flush procedure. Um, so this uh, directly relates to that. We're gonna look at uh, the hardware or discuss the hardware that we use to complete a back flush. Um, bleed uh, is sometimes a term we always uh, also use, which is also the same thing as a back flush. Um, the printer will do automatic bleed processes at startup and shutdown. So for example, when we start up with CleanJet, uh, after the clean jet is complete, the printer will run a couple bleed cycles and ultimately what that does is apply a vacuum to the gum body again after clean jet is complete um, to pull some of that excess makeup out of the gum body before we switch over to ink. So again, it's applying a vacuum to the gum body, uh, same way as we do when we uh, run a back flush, for example. So again, we'll look at the hardware that's involved there and how we would troubleshoot it. Okay, we're gonna start the printer up in a little bit here and show you what a normal uh, bleed cycle would look like. You've also seen the back flush process already, again, in our, our back flushing video. Um, so you've seen how that works. So we'll take a look at, again, normal operation, but before we do that, we'll discuss a couple of uh, symptoms that might tell us we actually have an issue with the bleed or back flush uh, circuit. Um, so a couple of visual cues at the print head one is, uh, let's say for example, you've stopped jetting at the end of the day, um, or you're troubleshooting and you've stopped jetting, and you notice after the clean jet, or ink jet and then clean jet off, um, we've got a little bit of fluid maybe dripping out of the nozzle or from the nozzle. That might be a good indicator that there was no bleed or back flush pulling the residual fluid out of the gum body. Um, another visual cue, uh, maybe we're having some print quality issues uh, and a visual cue there um, that would be relative to the bleed processes, the bleed valve sticking open, meaning there's constantly ink being sucked out of the gum body while we're trying to print. Um, that one's a little bit more tricky as far as uh, printing symptoms are concerned, but the visual symptom of fluid traveling through the bleed line when it shouldn't be is fairly obvious. So we'll take a look at that as well. All right, so we're gonna start the printer up. Uh, we're gonna start jetting with cleaning, again, so you can see what a normal bleed uh, process would look like. Um, so what's gonna happen is, uh, after we start the system up, uh, we generate some internal pressure uh, and a vacuum. We'll initiate the clean jet first, and at the end of clean jet, the system's automatically gonna run a couple of bleed cycles. So what you'll see is after clean jet, we're gonna apply a vacuum to the gum body, and how we do that is we open up valve three in the print head. Okay, so this is our bleed or our back flush valve. Um, we open uh, valve three, and at the same time, we close valve five, which is our gutter valve. When we close valve five, we actually close off the gutter, we close off the vacuum to the gutter, and subsequently redirect it to our bleed line. So we open valve three, we apply the vacuum to that part of the circuit, and that subsequently applies a vacuum all the way to our gun body. So what we'll see is fluid being sucked from the gun body all the way back through our bleed line. Again, if you've seen our back flush video, it's the exact same thing. We're just not manually spraying solvent at the nozzle. Okay, so we're gonna start jetting again with cleaning. Okay, so if we go to our display, start jetting with cleaning. And then we'll take a peek at the print head here. And what you're even gonna see uh, prior to clean jet is the printer will even do a quick, a quick bleed cycle and pull any residual fluid out of the gum body as well. So again, what you're gonna see is fluid traveling through the bleed line here. So we've got our bleed line, bleed valve, and again, the bleed line or back flush line to the gum body. So now we've got our clean jet starting. So we've got a jet of straight makeup, cleaning out our gum body, nozzle, and gutter. 
And when that's complete, you'll see another bleed cycle. So there we go. We're pulling some of that residual makeup out of the gum body. Okay, so one of the symptoms we discussed a little bit earlier in the video, uh, a visual uh, symptom that we can see if there's an issue with our bleed circuit or back flush circuit is uh, if valve three sticks open. Um, what you would see in that scenario is fluid always kind of pushing up the bleed line. Um, that can cause pressure issues at our print head and it can cause some print quality issues uh, subsequently because of that. So if you ever see fluid pushing up the bleed line when you're jetting normally, um, you know, when, when you start jetting, once clean jet's finished, once the inkjet's active and the printer's ready, if you still see fluid traveling up this line, uh, that's not good and again the culprit would very likely be valve 3. So we will discuss uh, how to troubleshoot that. Um, another symptom that we might see here is when the system is trying to run a bleed or let's say you're trying to do a back flush for example, if you're not able to get any fluid through here, um, it is also possible that valve 3 is stuck closed, it's not opening. Um, so you'll notice valve 3 really with the bleed or the back flush um, can be a, a big uh, troubleshooting point. Um, outside of that, if, again, if you've watched our troubleshooting the vacuum circuit, uh, again, the gutter valve, valve 5, our Venturi, um, those are really the other items in this circuit. So I would recommend watching that video as well. Um, so we're really mostly focusing on valve 3 here. Okay, so if we think we have an issue with valve three, um, we can go ahead and uh, take the valve off the print head, clean it out. We can use our system diagnostic to see if we can actuate the valve. Uh, if you've seen our video in which we troubleshoot valve seven um, in our no inkjet uh, troubleshooting video, it's really the exact same process. So uh, we'll show you how to do that anyway. Um, what I'm gonna do now is stop jetting and uh, then we can start working on valve three. All right, one handy tool that we can use uh, to see whether or not the valve is actuating, again, is our, our device diagnostic. So we're gonna go in and see if we can actually actuate valve three. Um, so we'll go to our settings page, diagnostic, and device. And again, the system password is always the current day's date. It's two digit day, two digit month, two digit year format. Okay, so again, valve three is our bleed valve, so we can try to actuate it from here. Now our valve is functioning normally, so you might be able to hear that click. That's what we're aiming for. If valve three was not functioning or not actuating properly, you would not hear anything at this point. Um, so if you don't hear anything, we're gonna go ahead and take apart the valve, clean it, and see if we can get it uh, recovered. Okay, so again, we're not jetting right now. Uh, you don't wanna be jetting when we're uh, working with micro valves. Um, we're gonna go ahead and again, take valve three off, clean it out. And one trick uh, you may recall from when we were troubleshooting valve seven in our inkjet troubleshooting video is sometimes you can actually just tap on these and that's enough to uh, knock them free or uh, help them actuate again. So maybe there's just a little bit of dried up ink or something in there that's just keeping it from opening. You can tap on these, um, you know, just the back of your screwdriver and that might be enough again to, to help them open. So you can tap on it, use your system diagnostic, try to actuate it again and you'll know right away if that took care of it. So if that didn't, we're gonna take the valve off the print head. Again, just two screws that hold it in place. And simple as that to get it off the print head. Um, again, you have two screws here and then you just have one figure eight gasket on the back of the uh, valve. So just be mindful of that. They don't fall out, um, but if you do take it out for cleaning purposes, just remember that that has to go back in. So all we're gonna do at this point is, again, uh, force some makeup into the input and output side of the valve, clean it up as best we can 
and uh, try to actuate it from there and hopefully recover the valve. And you can use a lint-free cloth too here to soak up some of that cleaner fluid. But again, all we're doing is putting some cleaner in here and we're gonna try to actuate the valve. And you can hear that this valve is clicking. Um, if that doesn't do the trick, you can also let the valve soak in cleaner. Make sure it's the same makeup cleaner that you're using in your printer. And what you can do is just take the screws out and take the gasket out. And what you can do is soak the valve. You can hopefully see this block here. There's a seam, uh, this block at the bottom of the valve assembly. We can submerge up to that seam uh, in cleaner. So you can put this in a beaker, in cleaner, just let it soak. And uh, every once in a while try to actuate it until it cleans out. So not much else to really do to the valve, just clean it up until it'll actuate. Again, you can tap on it a few times. Uh, once it does actuate, um, you can refit it to the printhead. Um, if you cannot get it to go whatsoever, um, you can actually just cut these valves out so we can trim the wires right here, solder in a new valve, and you're good to go. Um, naturally, if you have to go that route, make sure power is off to the printer. Okay, and once you've got either the valve recovered or if you, you know, maybe worst case scenario had to install a new one, um, we're just gonna go ahead and mount this back up to the printhead. Make sure you've got your gasket, your two screws. Okay, so we've got the bleed valve uh, working. We've verified that it's functioning. Um, if you've uh, verified the bleed valve or valve three uh, is functioning and you're still having an issue with back flush or bleed, um, from here, really, uh, this ties again into our vacuum circuit. So we've got valve five and the Venturi are the two major components that also have to be functioning for this to work. Um, if one of those two items are not working, you're gonna have other issues with your printer. Okay, if the Venturi is not functioning properly, yes, you're gonna have issues with your bleed or back flush uh, circuit. You're also gonna have vacuum issues with your gutter. Um, same with valve five. If valve five isn't quite functioning right, you'd also likely have vacuum issues with your gutter uh, along with the bleed circuit. So. Um, if you verified valve three, but you're still having issues, make sure you watch our troubleshooting the vacuum circuit video. Um, again, from here uh, down, it's the same hardware. So very important that you, you watch that video too if you're still having problems. All right, that wraps up our video on the bleed or back flush circuit for our Jetstream CIJ printer. Uh, if you wanna see more videos on this product or some of our other products, uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or head over to squidink.com for even more information on our entire product line. Thank you.